Hello, gang. We're going to talk about calorimeters, heat capacity, and go over some very common exam problems. So watch this through this introductory part and then check out those uh, important exam problems that you'll see likely on your midterm or, or final exams. Oh, and this is geared towards a general chemistry class. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, so this is a calorimeter. It's basically like a big insulated box and you have your reaction inside. And when the reaction or mixing occurs, we have heat transfer either to the calorimeter or it could go the other way around. And the heat capacity of the calorimeter is defined as the energy transferred to it as heat divided by the change in temperature. So the heat capacity of the calorimeter is how much energy is heat it takes to raise it by one degree Celsius. Now in calorimetry, calorimetry problems, we usually use this equation this way, where we have the energy transferred as heat equals the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. Okay, so there's two main types that we worry about in general chemistry. There's constant pressure calorimetry and constant volume calorimetry. In constant pressure calorimetry, it's open to the environment. And a common one seen in first year, junior year uh, labs, maybe high school labs, are uh, coffee cup calorimetry because it's cheap and easy and you can have an insulated coffee cup. It's open to the atmosphere. So because it's open to the atmosphere, it's under constant pressure. And we have the, the mixing that goes there. And then there's the other type, which is constant volume. And usually this is performed in second year and, and third year uh, level. Uh, but essentially you have a steel box inside here. This is the calorimeter. The steel box is in the middle. It's called the bomb because when you ignite the wires here, it combusts, it kind of blows up and burns. Well, it doesn't blow up, but it kind of burns and, and whatnot. And it's under constant volume. Now, these two different types are important. It's important to know the difference because the calculations are slightly different. Mostly the same, but slightly different. The heat capacity of the calorimeter under, when it's under constant pressure, for constant pressure conditions, is equal to the change in enthalpy divided by the change in temperature. So that heat is now the change in enthalpy here under constant pressure because it can do work against the surroundings. So that's why that's enthalpy. But under constant pressure, or sorry, under constant volume, the heat capacity is equal to the change in the internal energy over the temperature, change in temperature. This rigid container, it can't do any expansive work. So there's no PV work being done. So all of that heat transfer is directly going to the change in the internal energy of the system. Okay, let's get into some final exam problems, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to start relatively easy and work our way harder to the next couple too, so uh, make sure to kind of watch them all so you don't lose any subtleties that may come up on your exams. So we have in a coffee cup calorimeter, now if you see coffee cup, just think constant pressure calorimeter. We have 50 grams of water at 4 degrees Celsius is being added to 50 grams of water at 38 degrees Celsius. So let's just kind of draw what's going on. We have water here. It's uh, We have 50.0 grams. It's at 38 degrees Celsius. And then adding to that, we have another 50 grams of water. 50.0 grams at 4.0 degrees Celsius is being added to that. And it's in a coffee cup calorimeter, just like that. And we want to know what the final temperature is. Well, if we write out the heat transfer going on, this is hotter than this one. So we have energy being transferred as heat to here. And then we also have heat transfer to the calorimeter as well. So there's going to be all this kind of heat transfer going on, but the sum of the heat transfers, the heat transfer of the hot water plus the heat transfer, energy transferred as heat to the cold of the cold water. Oh, not cod. <laughs> uh, it's not fish. Cold water plus the heat transfer of the calorimeter, that has to equal zero. And pretty much this is what you'll do pretty much every, every, every time you have a calorimetry problem. You want to have the sum of all the heat transfers has to equal zero. So the heat of the hot water, we're going to use the equation MC delta T. This is what we do for pretty much every solution or reaction or substance, I should say. Plus we have an MC delta T. I call this the MCAT equation because it looks like MCAT, plus the heat transfer of the calorimeter. And we just went over that equation. That's the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature equals zero. 
the mass of the hot water is 50 grams. I'm going to do it down here, 50.0 grams. And the heat capacity of water is not given in the question. So it would be given to you in the question, or you would just look it up on a table provided. It's 4.186. That's the specific heat of water, joules per gram degrees Celsius. So how much energy it takes to raise the one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And the change in temperature change is final minus initial. I'll just do that right now so we don't have to calculate it. So the hot water is starting off at 38. The final is 24. So final minus initial, negative 14 degrees Celsius. That's the change in temperature. So negative 14 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's for the hot. Now the cold water, the mass is 50.0 grams. And the heat capacity of water is still 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And the change in temperature goes from, from 4 to 24, so it goes up by 20. So this will be 20 degrees Celsius. And we want the heat capacity of the calorimeter. That's our unknown. And the change in temperature. Now, originally... We have hot water in the calorimeter. The hot water is at 38 degrees Celsius. So we have to assume that the calorimeter is also at 38 degrees Celsius. That's, that's very hot for the calorimeter. That's a little unusual, actually. Uh, but we have to assume that this water, before this stuff gets poured in, this is in thermal equilibrium with the calorimeter. It has to be in thermal equilibrium with the calorimeter. If it's not, then we have heat transfer going on before we even add this water, the cold water. So we have to assume it's at 38 degrees as well, which is a bit unrealistic. Uh, usually we want it to be around room temperature, but we have no other choice. So negative 14 degrees Celsius, which equals zero. Okay, so we'll plug this in to our calculator. Uh, do the first term. Actually, we'll do the first two terms, 50 times 4.186 times a bracket negative 14 plus 50 times 4.186 times 20. So that's 1255.8, 1255.8. And our units, grams cancel and degrees Celsius cancels with both of them. So we're left with joules, which is good because uh, we want joules per degree Celsius. And that's plus whatever the heat capacity of the calorimeter is, plus negative 14 degrees Celsius equals zero. Okay, then we'll solve for the heat capacity of the calorimeter. If we just transpose this to the other side, negative 1255.8 joules divided by negative 14 degrees Celsius. And we'll plug that into our calculator. We'll move it down here. So the negatives cancel out, so 1255.8 divided by 14, and it should be positive. It should always be positive, 89.7. So 89.7 joules per degree Celsius. If it was negative, then you did something wrong. We can't add energy and it gets colder. That's what a negative heat capacity would, be, would mean. So this has to be positive. How many sig significant figures do we have? Uh, we have two here. Two, so we really only have two sig figs. So we'll say this is 90, 90 joules per degree Celsius. All right, this is our next exam problem. It builds on the last one, a little bit more complicated. And this is how it goes in a constant pressure calorimeter. And we have the heat capacity of the calorimeter, 18 kilojoules per degree Celsius. 12.3 grams of KCl is dissolved in 100.0 mils of water, initially at 24.3 degrees Celsius. And the question is asking us to find the final temperature. And we have this chemical equation right here, just this dissolving or dissolution of KCl. And we're given the standard enthalpy change of the reaction, 17.3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and it looks like we have the heat capacity of the solution, which looks like it's the same as water. So that's cool. And the density of the solution as well is we're approximating it to be 1.00 grams per mil. Okay, so to do this, we have a constant pressure calorimeter. So we're going to start off how we always start off with calorimetry, that the sum of the heat transfer is equal to zero. So the heat transfer of the solution of the reaction plus the heat transferred to the solution to or from plus the heat transferred of the calorimeter, all of that has to equal zero. 
and I'll just very, very briefly draw a schematic of what's going on. I hope you appreciate that, because uh, I like to draw schematics. So we have our solution in here, right? And then we have our KCL in here, and it's dissolving. Now, it's when it dissolves, it absorbs energy as heat, because this is positive. So we have energy of heat going in, and it's going in basically into the solution, and it's coming out of the reaction here and also out of the calorimeter as well. So everything's getting colder. It's getting colder because this reaction is sucking up heat. It's taking energy as heat away. Okay, so Q of the reaction. Now, this is our Q of the reaction. Uh, it's just literally straight up the enthalpy change, standard enthalpy change of the reaction. I, I derived this in many videos. Let me know. I can do it in one of the comments in this video if you like. Uh, Q of the solution. Since this is a mass, the solution has a mass. It's a substance. Uh, we're going to use MC delta T. I call this the MCAT equation of the solution. And the heat capacity or the heat transferred of the calorimeter is equal to the heat capacity. So C cal times the change in temperature. All right. So hopefully these are getting a little repetitive. The more you do, the better it gets. Now, before we plug in numbers, we need to look at each of these terms separately. This enthalpy change of the reaction is the heat transferred for 12.3 grams. It's kind of like the heat of the reaction of 12.3 grams of KCl, not per for one mole. And this enthalpy change of the reaction here, this is for one mole. We want to know what it is for 12.3 grams, not for one mole. So we need to convert this to find out what this value is for the full 12.3 grams. So we're going to start with this number here. Uh, so our enthalpy change of the reaction, standard enthalpy change. Uh, this is the number we're given, so we have to start with that one. 12.3 kilojoules for every one mole. And from here, we want to convert to grams, because we got to get to grams to know how many uh, kilojoules 12.3 grams needs. We want to cancel out moles. We want grams down here. And for every one mole, we need to know how much, uh, how many grams it weighs. You can look on the periodic table. Uh, I just Googled it here to make it easy. 74.551. So 74.551 grams. Our moles cancel out, and we're left with kilojoules per gram. But we don't care about kilojoules per gram. We want to know how many there are in 12.3 grams. So our grams will cancel out, and we're left with kilojoules, which is just the straight raw number that he transferred. So let's let's calculate that uh, before, so we don't have too many numbers going on. 17.3 divided by 74.551 times 12.3, 2.854. So 2.854. There should be a decimal here. It's not really really clear, but okay. And this is in kilojoules. Okay, so that's the heat transferred from the reaction. Let's look at this term here, this MC. Ah, you know what? I think we're okay. You know, let's let's plug in some numbers. So this reaction becomes, we're going to go over here to give ourselves lots of time, lots of room. This is 2.854. Now, this is in kilojoules, but our specific heat of the solution is in joules. So I'm going to convert it to joules times 10 to the 3 joules. 1,000 joules in a kilojoule, plus the mass of the solution. Well, we're adding 12.3 grams to 100 mils, and we're given the density. So that in one gram, one mil weighs one gram. So this is 100 grams of water. We're adding 12.3 grams to it, so 112.3 grams total. 112.3 grams total. The specific heat of water is, or the solution, which is basically we're assuming it's the same as water, <laughs> uh, 4.18, so 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, we're just going to say it's the change in temperature there. The calorimeter heat capacity is 18 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So 18 kilojoules per degree Celsius also times the change in temperature. And I think it'll be easier rather than go straight to the final temperature. Let's solve for the change in temperature first and then go from there. Uh, just note that like this change has to be the same as this change. This is the change in temperature of the solution. But initially, like initially, the initial temperature of the solution, it has to be equal 
to the initial temperature of the calorimeter because, well, the, the solution initially is just water, right? It's not, well, it's still a solution, but because there's other stuff in there probably, uh, but it's just water, straight up water. And that water has to be the same temperature of the, as the calorimeter. Otherwise, there'd be heat transfer going on before we even add the KCL. And that's going to screw up the experiment. So initially, we want the calorimeter and the water to be in thermal equilibrium. So they have the same initial temperature. And afterwards, everybody has the same final temperature. So the change in temperature between these two has to be the same. OK, hope, hope that makes sense. So these are like terms. And I'm going to add those terms. So 112.3 times 4.18 uh, plus 18. Oh, I got to convert that to kilojoules times 10 to the power of three. That was a close one times 10 to the power of three. Okay. So it is, Ooh, it's mostly, that's a, is that a high number? 18 kilojoules. I feel like that's a, that's not a very good calorimeter, isn't it? 18469.4. So 18, Oh, wrong color. 18469.4 kilojoules. Uh, I think it's kilojoules per degree Celsius. Grams cancel, cancel out. That's right. Kilojoules. No, not kilojoules. This is in joules uh, because we did we uh, we changed this here to 18 times 10 to the three joules. So okay, and that is the change in temperature equals. If we transpose this term to the other side, we subtract it to the other side. Negative 2.854 times 10 to the 3 joules. It's going to be a negative number, which is good because it's an endothermic reaction. So the change in temperature equals negative 2.854 times 10 to the 3 joules divided by, no, oh, this is joule. Let's see, this is joules. This is here, this should be joules per degree Celsius. We have joules per degree Celsius. So when we add them, joules per degree Celsius divided by 18,469.4 joules per degree Celsius. Our joules cancel out, so that's cool. We have one over degree Celsius in the denominator, so if we kiss and flip, it'll be in the degree, it'll be degree Celsius. The change in temperature is equal to the T final minus the T initial, and our T initial is, what's our T initial? 24.3, so 24.3. 24.3 equals this stuff. Maybe I'll just calculate it for fun. Uh, I got to rewrite it, rewrite the whole thing. So negative 2.854 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 18.469.4. Negative, oh, it's very small. That's because, okay, we'll talk about this. Uh, but that's good. This is, makes a good teaching point. Okay, so negative point. 1545, negative 0 0.1545 degrees Celsius. Now we want to add 24.3 to both sides. I'll just do that on the calculator. Plus 24.3, 24.145. Wait, 145, not 155. 145 degrees Celsius. Significant figures, uh, this has only one decimal place of precision, so that's going to kind of kill our precision. So it's 24.1 degrees Celsius. Boom, done. Ha. Uh, but let's talk about this for a minute. Look, look at this initial temperature, 24 degrees Celsius, and it only goes down by 0.15 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't drop very much. It doesn't drop very much. It really it should drop a lot more. But why is the temperature of the solution not dropping much? Well, this is a very high heat capacity. So the heat capacity of the calorimeter is very high. So it's like it's sucking up. Now heat isn't some isn't a thing. If I say it's sucking up all the heat, I think you kind of make sense, right? But heat's a process, so it's sucking up all the energy that's produced by via heat. So it's taking all of that energy of heat and it's sucking it up and it's not letting the temperature drop very much. So this is a horrible calorimeter. This is not a calorimeter that you'd want to use in an experiment like this because we're not able to measure much of a temperature drop. So uh, 
there we go. It's not very insulated, but that's cool. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope that was super well explained and we'll do the next one. So this last one involves bomb calorimetry and bomb calorimetry problems are quite common on midterms and final exams. And this is a rather long one because it has a lot of touch points. Uh, you'll learn a lot if you go through this whole thing with me. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it. This is a rather harder exam problem that came up, uh, but let's get into it. Okay. So it goes in a bomb calorimeter and we have the heat capacity of the calorimeter, 683 joules per degree Celsius, 1.20 grams of benzoic acid, and we have a molecular formula uh, and molecular mass reacted with oxygen, and the temperature rose from 24.63 degrees Celsius to 29.43 degrees Celsius, and the question is asking us to calculate the change in internal energy and the change in enthalpy in kilojoules per mole at 298 Kelvin. So here's a very rough schematic that I put down. We have a bomb calorimeter, which is like an insulated container. It's usually filled with water. And inside that is the bomb. It's a steel container. So it's, it's under constant volume. The volume can't change. And when we burn the benzoic acid, that's the white powder stuff here, we have energy released as heat. And the calorimeter heats up and, and that sort of thing. And we can measure that change. So because this is calorimetry, we're going to start off with this one right here. So we start off with, uh, as we usually do with most calorimetry problems, the sum of the heat transfers equals zero. So the heat of the reaction plus the heat of the calorimeter has to equal zero. And because this is under constant volume conditions, the heat of the reaction is equal to the change in the internal energy of the reaction right here. And we've seen this before, the heat transfer of the calorimeter is equal to the heat capacity of the calorimeter, to joules per degree Celsius times the temperature, because then degree Celsius cancels out, and we're left with Kelvin right there. So that equals zero. Now our next step here is to uh, plug this in. And I'm go going through this, because this is rather long, so I'm not just type so I'm saving time by typing it out. Hope you like that. Uh, the change in internal energy, we just put this to the other side, and then plug in the numbers. 683 times this temperature difference uh, here. And if we plug that in, we get a change of internal energy of negative 3,278.4 joules. And if you divide that by 1,000, because we want things in kilojoules, it's negative 3.2784 kilojoules. Now there's three sig figs. Um, but we're not done yet, because see this unit? This is in kilojoules here. And we want it in kilojoules per mole. We want it kilojoules per mole. But what does this these kilojoules actually represent? These are this is the change in internal energy, this many kilojoules for 1.20 grams of benzoic acid. So really it's this many kilojoules for every 1.20 grams of benzoic acid, because that's how much energy was released from the internal energy. Uh, for this many grams that we burned. So we want to know it in per mole. So we want to get a kilojoules per mole rather than kilojoules per gram. So we, we want to multiply it by our conversion factor, which has uh, the molar mass here. So there's 122.12 grams of benzoic acid for every one mole of benzoic acid or grams of benzoic acid cancel out. And we're left with kilojoules per mole. And if we solve that, we got negative 400.36 kilojoules uh, per mole here. So that's our change in internal energy. So we're kind of halfway there. Uh, we just need to get the change in the enthalpy. But we don't have the right significant figures. We want three significant figures. So we'll round this off. When we report this number, we'll round it to three sig figs. So negative 400 and those zeros are significant kilojoules per mole. So we want the enthalpy. And the enthalpy is defined as the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume. Now, this we don't have any information about pressure, uh, the changes in pressure, and we don't know what the volume of the bomb calorimeter is, but we do know that the pressure times the volume equals NRT, PV equals NRT for an ideal gas. Uh, we're assuming these are ideal gases, which is what we often do. Now, the change in the pressure times the volume equals the change in the number of moles times RT. Because this change in pressure, the volume's constant, so we could pull the volume out, but the change in pressure is due to the change in the number of moles. Now, you may ask, why don't we have the change in temperature here? Uh, but what we want, if we scroll up and get rid of this, this picture right here, 
we want to know the change in enthalpy at 298 Kelvin. Now the change in internal energy is around 25 degrees Celsius, is usually around the middle number. It's a little bit higher here, uh, but we're assuming that it's not changing much. Uh, but since we want to know what this enthalpy change is, we want to try and calculate it as close as possible at 298 Kelvin. This is the temperature uh, that we plug in here. Okay, so this is the change in pressure times the volume. We're going to substitute this in because we can figure out how many moles uh, the change in moles there are. So our change in enthalpy equation is equal to the change in internal energy plus this change in moles times RT. Okay, we got this change in internal energy, but we need to find out what this term is. And I have it ready for us right here. The change in the number of moles, RT, that's this change in moles is going to be final minus initial, and it's for the gas. So it's the yeah, the total number of gas mo molecules, moles of gas, minus the moles of the reactants times RT. Um, and the reason we only care about the gas is because the gas is what contributes to the pressure. Right? The liquids and solids don't contribute to the pressure. So we're going to need a balanced chemical equation to find out the number of moles of gas of the reactants versus the products. And we have one right here. I just wrote it out. Now, you may be given this, but this is a combustion reaction. And with combustion of re uh, combustion reaction, we react it with water and it creates CO2. Oh, sorry, react it with oxygen and it creates CO2 in water. This is the balanced equation. And we use the number of moles here based on the balanced equation. So the change in moles are going to be seven moles because there's seven moles of uh, CO2 for the balanced equation, and we need 7.5 moles of oxygen, so 7 minus 7.5 uh, times RT, and we want to choose the R that has joules in it because we definitely want joules. Okay, so if we plug this in and calculate it, we get uh, negative 1,238.86 joules. Uh, in kilojoules, it's negative 1.239 kilojoules. Now, this is very deceptive, deceiving, and I hope you're listening now. See how moles here cancel out? Moles cancel out. Kelvin cancels out. So we're left with joules, right? We're left with kilojoules. But this isn't just kilojoules, right? This isn't kilojoules. This is kilojoules for every one reaction. So for every one mole of benzoic acid that reacts with 7.5 moles of oxygen, then there is... Uh, negative 1.239 kilojoules of, now this would be pressure volume work, uh, that's that's performed, that's that's lost. This is, this is energy that's lost. But it's for one mole of benzoic acid, right? Which is for one mole of the reaction, which is what we have here. So really, this, this kilojoules here is a hidden unit. It's actually kilojoules per mole. It's kilojoules per mole of the reaction because the moles that we put here are based on the balanced equation. They're not based on what actually reacted. It's based on the balanced chemical reaction. So if we say these are kilojoules per one mole of the reaction, then we can just write this as negative 1.239 kilojoules per mole. Now we've got to fix the sig figs, but now we're in kilojoules per mole. And just like what we did before when we solved for the change in internal energy, we're in kilojoules per mole. So we're in the same units. Okay, so from here, we can now plug in our equation right here. So we'll just literally plug it in. So the change in enthalpy equals negative 400.36 kilojoules per mole. We want to use the exact, well, not the exact, but we want to use more decimal places than we need uh, of precision. And then minus uh, the number that we just calculated here for the change uh, NRT. And then finally, so we'll plug it in. So if we subtract these two together, we get negative 401 kilojoules per mole. I round everything to three sig figs. Uh, I think I did here. I never want to forget those sig figs. There we are. Negative 402 kilojoules per mole. Okay. All right, y'all. I've got many other videos on calorimetry, balm calorimetry, constant pressure calorimetry, all different topics in thermodynamics and other aspects of chemistry, also in physics and math as well. So feel free to check those out. And thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.